All right, guys. So we're continuing off with um, I already finished what the Dreams of Ice expansion. That was expansion 2.4 of A Realm Reborn. Yes, I know I'm moving very slow through this, but I'm very much enjoying my time here. So now we're in Before the Fall. So we're going to go take care of that MSQ uh, quest now. Which would be way our good intention. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's in Kurthus. We're, we're here. It's not in Kurthus. I don't know why I said that. All right, so the first quest we're going to have in the Before the Fall expansion is going to be Good Intentions. So let's start our, our way, dude. We're almost to Heaven's Ward, so I'm very excited for that, of that. Minfilia is considering which of her many responsibilities demands her utmost attention. I am most eager to address the ASEAN threat, however, we dare not neglect our other pressing concerns. We both know full well that Saint Shiva will not be the last primal we face, and our relationship with Ishgard is still tenuous at best. To think that the resolution of the primal threat was once the sole priority of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Some days I wonder if it was wise for us to take on so many other responsibilities. Lest you forget, Antecedent, the Scions need not shudder to burden alone. We're not the Crystal Braves established for this very reason. True, we are presented with a multitude of problems. However, we have all the resources we need to address them in turn. Olivia in particular is ever a steady hand who I trust will continue to support the Braves. Aye. To what do we owe the pleasure? Have there been further developments regarding the situation in Uldar? As expected, the Immortal Flames have been struggling to cope with the revelation that one of the highest ranking officers was a Garlean agent. Suffice it to say, Telegi Adelegi and his monetarist ilk have wasted no time in attempting to turn the situation to their advantage. Coupled with ongoing unrest, the flames are finding themselves hard-pressed. Plainly, General Raubon needs our help, and I will direct the Crystal Braves to offer what support they can. If I am to stay abreast of the latest developments and issue effective orders, however, I cannot afford to waste time traveling back and forth. And so, for the foreseeable future, I think it would be for the best if I were to remain in Uldar, unless you have an objection. None whatsoever. We have matters here well in hand. Moonbreeder's research is, is proceeding as planned. Uh, in more of a question. <laughs> so she tells me, though I am not familiar with the details, Urianja is poring over his tomes at the Waking Sands, and the others are contributing in their own ways. Alas, the key problem, how to perform an ethereal blade at will, remains unsolved. Nevertheless, it is only a matter of time. Olivia, while we focus on the task, mayhap you could assist Alpha Noah and his braves with theirs. It would do so much to restore faith in the immortal flames if the Warrior of Light was seen working on their behalf. Never forget that your esteemed status allows you to act in ways that those more tightly bound to organizations and nations cannot. As ever, I implore you to do so. Not that your response was ever in doubt, but I humbly thank you once more for aiding our cause. Now then, there are preparations I must attend to b before my departure, such as receiving Ryo's latest report. He has proven to be quite skilled at gathering information others wish kept secret. Hence why I placed him under my direct command and ordered him to investigate the Uldan riots. Were you finished here? Join me outside. Depending on what he has to say, I may soon have a favor to ask. If there are any developments on our front, I shall inform you at once in the usual fashion. 
You mean to travel back all the way over here, even though you could just let us know through, like, Link Pearl? All right. Yo. Pleasure as always, Olivia. You'll be escorting the commander to Uldar, I take it. Actually, I had another task in mind for her. If you would be so kind as to repeat your report for her benefit. Right then. Me and... Uh, what kind of voice? Me and mine have been making inquiries into the source of the weapons that found their ways into refugee hands the way back. So happens we caught wind of something promising. A rather large purchase of sharp and pointy things by a black marketer holded up near Highbridge. I doubt that this man would have secured such a quantity of weapons if he did not already have clients waiting. Clients that, for whatever reason, would prefer for his transaction to remain secret. Brings to mind that merchant what caught an arrow while talking to Olivia daunted. Generous fellow he was, doling out swords and spears to the downtrodden and disgruntled. Which isn't to say that these clients have the same mischief in mind. But if ye want to be sure, might be prudent to intervene before they collect their goods savvy. What? Seizing the weapons before they fall into the wrong hands would be for the best. However, if we strike at the appointed hour, we might capture the black marketer as well as his clients. What say you, Olivia? Gentlemen, lock and load. Then it is settled. Rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at Highbridge and intervene when the exchange takes place. Now then, if you would excuse me, I must leave for Ulda. I expect good tidings. Here we go, we're at Highbridge now. I love this place. Alright. Ah, oh, Olivia. My scouts have been keeping a close eye on the black market here, and it would seem that his guests have arrived. It would also seem that he has hired more than a few men to stand guard, common thugs of no consequence, but they nevertheless pose a threat. Even so, I feel compelled to apologize. This is far beneath the woman of your standing, and Commander Levier hadn't have dispatched you hither. But powerful men ever have need of loyal, able-bodied friends. Having found one in you, it is only natural that he would come to rely upon you without hesitation. Bait and switch. Ilbert is eager to bring the black marketeer and his clients to justice. Now then. We should make for the burning wall without delay and secure those weapons. The first unit will ensure that the clients do not escape. With me, Olivia. All right. Get on over there, dude. You're already taking way too long. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, all right, all right. I spy the one man, but there are sure to be others. I've a plan. While you approach the sentry and create a distraction, my men and I will slip past and catch the black marketeer unawares. Once you've disposed of the thugs, wait for us outside the tunnel entrance. Any questions? Then let us be off. Good luck, my friend. All right. Where those thugs at? They're about to catch a right whooping. Is this him? Who goes there? An adventure? Damned fool. You should have never come here. Leave me alone. Fire three, boom. That's it. Murder she wrote on those fools. Who's next? Ah. Hurry. Way with you. Anyone else? Wow, okay. Child's play. Alright, that's 
it. Now what? It's too quiet. I don't understand. What's this all about? Somebody's dead. Uh oh. I told you, dude. Ilbert. Ilbert is this dude. Look, you see, he's here. He killed him. Ilbert knows something. As you can see, this is a fine mess. Before I tried to restrain him, he drew a hidden blade and lashed out, but before I could disarm him, one of my subordinates panicked, and this is the result. How foolish of me to underestimate the bastard, and to bring an inexperienced recruit. Commander Levier will be most disappointed. Damn it all! A golden opportunity wasted! Nah, I don't know, dude. As for the clients, though, we we know not how they slipped past our perimeter. At present, the first is currently tracking a party of dusk white cell swords. We suspect maybe them. With that, we could have enlisted the aid of the immortal flames or the brass blades. Alas, we're here to aid them. They're in no position to aid us. Well, at the very least, we have secured the weapons. Yet even that accomplishment is lacking. But the information we received indicated a massive shipment, and this is anything but. Bait and switch. Ilbert's, Il, Ilbert's, Ilbert, it's Ilbert, dude. Ilbert would like nothing more than to have this incident forgotten. Of course he would. I will join the first in their hunt for the dusk white cell swords. If the gods are good, we will catch them before they escape into the Black Shroud. In the meantime, I ask that you deliver these weapons to Uldar in my stead. Entrust them to the third's Yu Yu Hasei. He will take care of the rest. I'm just gonna carry this whole big old wooden crate. You see, I, had to I told you, I bet you... Either that, or he's being set up to look like the, um, traitor when he's not. Alright, where is Yu Yu Hase? Ah, the warrior of light, ever reliable friend to the Crystal Braves. You have my deepest thanks for your assistance in Curtis. Now, what brings you to us this day? All of these weapons, bruh. All these weapons, bruh. You got any use? I carried it. This whole thing. By myself. A gift of weapons from a certain black marketeer. Courtesy of Captain Ilbert, you say. Understood. Once we've cataloged the contents, I'll have them delivered to the Hall of Flames. This cannot be everything, can it? What was the name? It wasn't Riol, right? Stated with confidence that there would be far greater quantity of weapons. Oh no, it was... The, well, ah, it doesn't matter. A blatant falsehood. Clearly Riol is unfamiliar with the ways of Udon merchants. Whoever strive to present themselves as greater than they are. We, we, we should be thankful that his information was not completely erroneous. And that we managed to achieve anything of worth at all. It's uh, still something worth celebrating. Isn't it, Lieutenant? Besides, we've got more important things to worry about, like fighting those Guardians up north. There'll be no fighting if, uh, if I have anything to say about it. Our orders are to stand watch, not to seek glory in battle. If you have no further need of us, then I shall take my unit to the Cerulean Processing Plant. Time for the fourth to earn their keep, eh? Fight well, Elian, for the freedom of all. this about anyways what are these weapons for I must have not been paying attention excellent work as always my friend rest assured that the immortal flames will hear of your contribution 
until we meet again. Yo, Olivia, a word if, if it please ye. Not here. Look for me at the Sapphire Exchange. Ah, uh, no need for whistling. Uh, this time, uh, don't you worry. <laughs> Not here. Look for me at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. No need for whistling this time. Don't you worry. I got a bad feeling about this. Here's you. Thanks for indulging me, request. Few places better than a market for privacy, I find. All the hustle and bustle, oh commerce means most conversations go unnoticed. I'll get to the point. At the burning wall, when you and the captain interrupted the exchange, what happened? Tell me everything. Leave no detail out. And well, like you know, yeah. Hmm. That's not quite how the first told it. These desk whites, they were chasing. Latest word is that we lost the trail, but you never saw him yourself. Not before the fighting started and not after. Something ain't right. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it in me bones. I'm not daft enough to be misled by some merchant's drunken boasts. Our information was reliable. God damn it. I knew he purchased those weapons. <laughs> As if I've ever, I've never deciphered a money lender's books or had to follow a transaction back to its source. Did plenty of that back when the Braves were getting started, believe me. The commander wanted assurances that we weren't taking gill from the wrong sort of benefactors. Of course, these days the money flows like water, and then, and the first and third get the shiniest new toys. Hmm, it's not sitting right. Forgive me, friend. I have a lot on me mind these days, and I appreciate your landing an ear right then. Best get back to it. Like, I had a little pirate voice for him, and then I kind of changed it. Olivia, can you hear me? This is Tataru. Your presence is urgently requested to, at the Rising Stones. Please come see me as soon as you are able. Classic Tataru. All right, Tataru, what's so urgent? Thank you for coming so quickly, Olivia. We've, we've, we've a guest from Ishgard who wishes to speak with you. A most, um, determined lady by all indications. The rising chorus. Ooh, Tataru seems eager to escort you to the solar. Salar. Our guest is with the antecedent in the Salar at present. Let's not keep them waiting any longer, shall we? Yes, 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 yes. Lead the way. Brida, Rianja, and Lucia. That's the one that's next to... Uh, the other dude, right? We have a guest from Ishgard yeah, who wishes dude. to speak with you. I believe the two of you have met. Mm -hmm. We have. I had hoped to speak with Commander Leveilleur as well, but I cannot afford to wait any longer. The Lord Commander sent me hither to request your aid in a matter of grave import. You see now why I had Tataru summon you. Tataru. Saying Tataru. Come now on, that now. we're all assembled, perhaps you would be good enough to elaborate on the nature of the matter which brought you to us. The Observatorium's astrologians have sounded the alarm. Last night, the Dragon Star burned with an intensity not seen in 15 summers. Not since the Dravanians engaged the Empire in the Battle of Silvertear Skies. Hmm. The northern sky doth burn full bright upon the Worm Lord's call. The red behemoth beckoneth, and flame consumeth all. The old Curth and Rhyme, aye. 
The brightening of the dragon star is said to accompany the roar of a great worm. The astrologians believe that it was Midgard Soma himself who cried out on this occasion. Right, right, After I remember that. After an absence of centuries, the King of Kings did return to lead his kind against the might of Garlemald, only to fall in his duel with the Agrius, proud flagship of the Galian fleet. Devoid of life, his corpse remaineth entwined about the Magitek monstrosity even unto this day. Ariange has the right of it. Whatever this alteration in the Dragon Star portends, the Great Worm has shown no sign of life. Yet. Taru, have the Domans reported aught out of the ordinary? Correct me if I'm wrong, but if Midgard Zorma had roared, wouldn't we have heard it here in Revenant's Toll? Roar is but a figure of speech. Dravanians can communicate in ways beyond our kin. It is for this very reason that we are forced to look for signs in the heavens. We cannot say with any confidence that a great worm roared at all, much less that it was Midgard Sorma. Only by directly examining the Keeper of the Lake can we be certain. However, it will take too long to gain the Holy See's approval to dispatch the Temple Knights. Therefore, Sir Emmerich would entrust this task to you. Emmerich, you there you accept? go. I mean, do I really have a choice? We knew you would not disappoint us. Now, if you would excuse me, I must return and assist the Lord Commander. We have precious little time to prepare. To prepare for what, pray tell? Uh-oh. The music When a great quiet. worm roars, his brethren cannot choose but answer. We prepare for battle. Oh. Things just got very interesting in one question. Forgive me if I state aught which you already know, but I would ensure that you understand the nature of your destination. As Orion just stated, what we now call the Keeper of the Lake is the wreckage of the Agrius former flagship of the Imperial Fleet and the corpse of the worm responsible for its destruction. Fifteen years ago, as the next step in his campaign to subjugate Eorzea, Gaius von Belzar attempted to seize control of Mordona. So massive was his force that all thought his victory a foregone conclusion. But an unlikely ally came to Eorzea's aid that day, Midgard Sormer, Legendary guardian of Silvertear Falls burst forth from beneath the waters of the lake and led a host of dragons against the Galian airships overhead. In what would later become known as the Battle of Silvertear Skies, the Great Worm felled countless airships before engaging the Agrius. In the ensuing struggle, the flagship's cerulean engines failed and it tumbled into the lake below. Yet this victory came at a great cost for the explosion which followed claimed the life of the Great Worm as well. That same explosion transformed Silvertear Falls into the desolate wasteland it is today, draining the lake of its waters and crystallizing ether for moms around. Yet a remnant of the lake uh, remains, and at its center a constant reminder of the fateful day long ago. In accordance with Sir Americ's wishes, our Doman allies have been standing watch over the Keeper of the Lake. It would be wise to speak with them before investigating the wreckage yourself. Be careful, my friend. We know not what dangers await you within. Now then, let us not neglect our own task. There is much to be done and precious little time to do it. Okay, okay, that's cool. We get to go inside the Agrius, basically. Doman watch. You're in luck, miss. I was about to send word to Revenant's Toll about the Garleans. Of late, I've been... S I don't know why I gave him this voice. I've seen small airships, likely from Castrum Sentry, come and go from the Keeper of the Lake. Though I cannot say for certain at this distance, I believe they may be salvaging something from within the wreckage. The Castrum Supplies Lines. 
Supply lines have been cut for some time, and I'd wager they're desperately in need of spare parts and other equipment. Why didn't you stop them? So it's true then. The Ishgardians honestly fear that the worm might rise again? Hmm. Well, from here, that seems rather unlikely. But if it's assurances they want, you've no choice but to inspect the corpse in its entirety. Easier said than done, given the creatures which inhabit the wreckage, and the aforementioned Garleans who won't take kindly to your presence. They're sure to fire upon an airship, so I'd advise a more stealthily approach. Take this boat and a few of your comrades to the base of the Agrius. Then climb to the top. That's the only viable approach, I'd say. The Keeper of the Lake, now accessible. Ooh, new duty. Let's sign up. There it is. Fifteen years ago, in the skies above Silvertear Falls, the invading forces of the 14th Legion were set upon by a host of dragons. Leading the charge was Midgard Soma, legendary king of kings, who engaged the Garlean flagship, the Agrius, in battle. In the end, both Midgard Soma and his foe fell to the earth and their tangled remains stand as a memorial to that day. A ruined airship and the charred corpse of the worm lord who brought it low, forever devoid of life. Yeah, let's go. So I guess in this time, let me go ahead and explain to y'all. I was playing over with Olivia's profile, right? So then, um, what had happened was that on my OBS, I had, like, stop recording on Backspace and, like, pause recording on Space. And those are not ideal spots to put those kinds of commands while playing this game. Broccoli agrees. And, you know, every time I was typing, I was pressing space and pausing and unpausing. I didn't even know that. And, and then I pressed backspace because I wanted to delete something. And, well, it deleted the thing, but it also stopped the recording. So, I didn't record any of the Keeper of the Lake. And that's what we're going to do now, all right? So, let's just wait. There we go. Commence battle. All right, let's get right back to where we were. This is great. This is great. This is great. We're already starting up great. Everybody's actually awake. Make the camera go up. Does Lala be small? Flare. Done. Let's go. Piece of cake! This is where we, uh, failed last time. The cool thing about the last time, though, is that... I think I had, like, a, a team of people that didn't know what was going on. So it was, like, a really fresh experiment. And I didn't know what was going on, so... Go. Yeah. Let's continue the beating. <laughs> Give him a Thunder 3. Let's get that dot back up. Go back to our Fire 3. Give him a Fire 2. Give him a Fire 2. Done, son. Woo. Let's continue. Is any of this for me? Nope. Broccoli, you would come over here right now and be loud AF. Zoreka! Equitas! Veritas! He's good. We good. No, not for me. Come on, come on, come on. So we, we should have put them all together for the AOE, but no, somebody, no, this guy's easy, there we go, 
Can you please stop that noise? Here's the next one. All right, boys. <clears throat> Was that guy stacking like chakra? All right, right, right. We got rid of that guy. We're almost done with this guy. This guy's not too hard. Come on, give me some for a mage. Darn it, dude. That's for a white mage. We've now reached the outside of the Adrias. Whee! That's a loyal bias. Stupid bird. All this fodder. Okay, here we go. That's the main guy right there. The loyal wife. Has been reduced to dust. We've reached it. Who treadeth now upon my bones and waketh me from slumber, sweet? You look pretty asleep to me, my guy. Let's go then, dude. I just I love the background music. Like it's so fitting and cold. Let's go, people. Do not portend us what the not know is ah. What? This one shouldn't take too long either. Everybody seems to be on point with everything. Phantom Admonishment! That's the... Isn't that the music from when you're riding your mount? We're getting hit, we're getting hit. Let's concentrate on that one. The Marouge Strength. Dude, I hope we can get to Limit Break 3. I have yet to use the Limit Break for this guy. Poor oh, little Roraria. Give him the addle. Give him the addle. He's almost dead. Yes, it's Midgard Somer, dude. I can use a freaking limit break on Midgard Somer. <laughs> Why can't I use it? What the hell? I died. I died. <laughs>
by her gifts hast thou earned a moment's reprieve. Speak, mortal, and... Oops. Guided by a star. My people have heard the song, Ishgard shall burn. Sons must answer for their father's misdeeds. We do not <laughs> forget. Why do you answer the call, Broccoli? We do not forgive. Seven children did I sire, one now singeth of retribution. I rise to join in the chorus. Laser beams. Shot through the heart. See with eyes unclouded. What does doth mean, lady, I thought? Okay, but now like what? 
what does this mean for me now? The covenant binds me to thee. I shall watch, listen, and wait. Fight and struggle. You may summon Midgar Solmer. Alright. I was beginning to fear the worst. Were those explosions I saw? Ah, but you shouldn't waste your time talking with me. Alphano left a message stating that you were to return to the Rising Stones at once. And thus I shall. Praise the Twelve that you are hale and whole. I came as soon as Minfili informed me of Sir Myrick's request. You have completed your investigation of the Keep of the Lake, I take it. Then I would hear your report. You conversed with Midgard Sama. I swear, were anyone else to make such a claim, I would regard it with considerable skepticism. Are we to understand that the Worm Lord did not perish? And has in sooth lain dormant these past fifteen years? Less a resurrection and more rejuvenation for he who dwelleth in eternity, years passing as moments. Though his words were ambiguous at times, one statement left little room for interpretation. My people have heard the song, Ishgard shall burn. Clearly an attack is imminent. We must share this information with Sir Amiric immediately. However, we dare not divulge your conversation with Midgard Soma in its entirety. To acknowledge to even acknowledge that you were you heard the voice of a Dravanian is a grave but necessary risk. Lest we forget, men have been executed as heretics for declaring as much. For your own protection and for the sake of our tenuous relations with Ishgard. The truth cannot leave this room. <laughs> As for how we shall present our revelation to Sir Amiric's emissary, you may leave that to me. Pray remain here for now. Is there something you're not telling us, Rororia? You seem different somehow. Tis almost as if you are missing something. Something important. I I speak no longer to Hylan. Twelve full fend Midgard so stripped you of the blessing of light. Are you alright? How do you feel? Quite fine. I see. It is a relief to hear that you are otherwise unharmed. Beggar's belief that any being could possess the power to deprive you of her blessing. Hmm, Midgard Soma made mention of a covenant, did he not? One of the ancient myths regarding Silver Tear Fall states that when the waters came into existence, so too did the Great Worm. Althika Nemea, Brother Time and Sister Fate, 
decreed that Midgard Solmer ever watch over the source form from which all water and magic was said to flow. I wonder, what if this was the covenant of which he spoke, and twas not the gods with whom he treated but Heidelin herself? Well, if he is watching over you as he claimed, mayhap you will have an opportunity to ask. Let us keep this matter to ourselves. I do not wish to burden our friends needlessly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Twelve for fed. What do you want? Art thou a pawn? Or master of thy fate? What hast thou wrought by thine own hands, mortal? My friend, I can scarce believe it. You confronted the Worm Lord and lived to tell the tale. That's right. It was easy. I died only once. I give thanks to Heloni for your preservation. It is our sole cause for gladness. Your encounter with the Keeper of the Lake served to confirm our fears. A great worm has roared, and it makes little difference if it was one of the two in Eorzea, or any other. The Dravanians are coming. I am told that Ishgard has magical defenses against Dravanian attack, though I am not privy to their exact nature. Will they be enough to repel a massive force? Ishgard has weathered countless assaults over centuries. This will be no different. And now that you have confirmed the threat, none can ignore the Lord Commander's calls for the wards to be strengthened. Of course. I dare not presume to speak for him, but I expect the Lord Commander would sing your praises. I must away, but we shall meet again soon. I. Countless assaults weathered, and this will be no different? Why am I not convinced? The Ashgardians have warned that the Dravanians for centuries, nay, nearly 1,000 years. In all that time, not once have their enemies breached the defenses and entered the city proper. Yet regardless of how these... How, uh, yet regardless of how strong these magical wards may be, I nevertheless fear that the Ishgardians are underestimating the gravity of the situation. Though it, would not, it was not Midgard Summer who rolled, the call to arms by one of the first wounded cannot be ignored. Until such time as they choose to request our aid, however, we can do naught but observe the situation at a distance, and pray that our fears are unfounded. Go. On the next episode, we will continue with Olivia on either on demand. Alphino has a message from Moon Breeder for the Scions. We'll do that one next time, and we're gonna cut it there for this one, so I no longer play with this dude. Maybe I'll play with him later. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this. Yeah. See you on the next one, guys. Peace.